Every student of immunology knows that the major histocompatibility complex, or the MHC, is very important. The genes and the class of genes for the MHC in the mouse are shown in this slide. There are class 1 genes and class 2 genes. The class 1 genes are K and D, while the class 2 genes are A alpha and B alpha, E beta and E alpha. The two A alpha and B alpha genes encode one molecule called the A type uh, class 2 and the E beta and E alpha genes encode another molecule called E uh, MHC class 2 E. There was a very important discovery made in 1976. The discovery of IJ. IJ were serological determinants present on suppressor T cells and suppressor T cell factors. The phenomenon was reported in back-to-back -back papers published in the Journal of Experimental Medicine, which was the premier journal for immunology in those days. We now come to the definition of IJ. IJ is defined by anti-IJ antibodies. We can produce anti-IJ antibodies by immunizing, for example, uh, MHC allele B mice with cells from MHC allele K mice, and that will produce anti-IJ K antibodies. We produce antibodies with the IJB serological phenotype by immunizing MHCK mice, for example, with cells from MHC allele B mice. So in those two papers published in the Journal of Experimental Medicine, which included a large number of different mice from a large number of different uh, genetic backgrounds. The investigators in both groups found that the apparent location of IJ within the MHC was between E beta and E alpha. In other words, right in the middle of what was a very exciting area for immunologists. So there was a lot of excitement because now people knew or thought they knew that there was a place within the MHC for a very important genes or genes to be located that were involved in the regulation of the immune response via suppressor T cells and suppressor T cell factors. But there was a bombshell in 1982, six years later. At that stage, gene sequencing had reached the point where it was possible to sequence the entire MHC region within mice. And when people did that, they discovered that all the genes were there except for IJ. The, I, the gene that had been presumed to have been located within the MHC class 2 and that was presumed to encode IJ determinants simply didn't exist. This was a shock. It was confirmed by an additional study in 83 saying the same thing. So what determines the IJ phenotype uh, of a mouse? It turns out that the IJ phenotype depends on, which, on the MHC environment within which the T cells mature. And here we have two papers published in 85 and 86 uh, that took us a little bit closer to understanding IJ. 
So let's see how we can relate the phenomenon of IJ to MHC class 2 in terms of the network theory. In the network theory, we're interested not only in clones that recognize MHC class 2, but clones that recognize those clones. So we have anti-MHC class 2 clones and anti-anti-MHC class 2 clones. Here we have a picture of how such clones could relate to each other in terms of what I call a divergent topology. You will see what I mean by this when we see the contrast in the next slide to a convergent topology. This is a slide showing a convergent topology in contrast to the divergent topology of the last slide. Here we have clones which are anti-MHC class 2 and clones which are anti-anti-MHC class 2. There is mutual selection between the anti-class 2 clones and the anti-anti-class 2 clones. The anti-anti-class 2 clones are selected to recognize as many possible clones as, as many clones as possible of the anti class 2 clones. And there is mutual stimulation between those two. And due to the convergent nature of the interaction, a very more sharply defined population is selected at the anti anti class 2 than is the case for the divergent topology. This accounts for IJ being a well-defined serological entity, serologically detectable entity, than can be the case for a divergent topology. We're explaining the IJ phenomena in terms of co-selection. CD4 plus helper T cells are co-selected with CD8 plus suppressor T cells. This results in the selection of CD8 plus cells that have complementary receptors to the largest possible number of CD4 plus helper T cells and vice versa. This results in the co-selection of IJ that is anti-anti MHC class 2 and is indirectly influenced by MHC class 2 and that results in IJ being indirectly uh, mapping to the region in the MHC complex where it is in fact found. So here we have it, the convergent topology resulting in the emergence of IJ as a serologically detectable determinant. We switch now to another phenomena called second symmetry, which is important in immune network theory. If we immunize a mouse A with lymphocytes with a mouse B, the mouse makes A anti-B response and the antibodies bind to the antibodies produced in the B anti-A response. So in other words, the A anti-B response is anti a B anti-A response. This was initially understood in the context of the responses being not only to the uh, antigens, the foreign antigens in each case, but also a response to the receptors uh, on the lymphocytes being used in the immunization. So the A's response to B was anti-B and anti-anti-A, while B's response to A is anti-A and anti-anti-B. And you can see immediately that these two responses in each of the two mice are complementary to the two responses in the other mouse. In extended second symmetry, we include an anti-IJ response. An anti-AB serum made in a mouse A consists of three components, anti-B, anti-anti-A, and anti-IJ superscript B. 
The B anti-A response includes anti-A, anti-anti-B, and anti-IJ superscript A. So again, all of the antibodies in the A anti-B serum are complementary to antibodies produced in a B anti-A serum. To reiterate once more, in extended second symmetry, we have three antibodies being produced in an A anti-B response, and these are complementary to the three antibodies being produced in a B anti-A response. We now come to an age-old problem for immunology. How does the immune system discriminate between things that are foreign and things that are part of self? We want to be able to respond immunologically to things that are foreign and get rid of them, but at the same time we don't want that immune response to cross-react with any self components. So how could that work? And how can network theory help us to understand it? So we start off by recalling again our IJ model with MHC class 2, anti class 2 and anti-anti class 2 being IJ. We're going to add to that model additional components that have been characterized by various immunologists in the uh, 1980s in particular. Clones called TS1, TS3, TH2 and IgG producing clones are shown in this particular model. Again it is a co-selection model where the clones which are anti-MHC class 2 are co-selected with clones that are anti-anti-MHC class 2 and these in turn are co-selected with clones that are triple anti-MHC class 2. We now add to this network a B2 and B1 clones, B clones B2 clones being clones that make IgG and B1 clones being clones that make IgM. And we're taking into account in this model all of the self antigens. So all of the self antigens stimulate TH1 and TS1 clones, which are anti self, TH2, TS2 and B2 clones are anti-anti-self. IgM and TS3 clones are triple anti-self. TS2 is the central regulating clones in this system. And within this picture, the B2 population are selected to have V regions that are similar to the V regions on that TS2 population.